Hallelujah. Another thing I want to ask you, brother. When you start speaking, uh, picking up, say, 10 pounds dumbbells, after a few days, is the 10 pounds becoming easy to carry? It becomes easy. Then, then you increase the weight. You go for a bigger capacity. The same thing happens in our life. When you start handling the dumbbells at home in a right way, your capacity increases. Now you can take a bigger pressure and still pick up the dumbbells and you are developing uh, spiritual muscles and spiritual uh, 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 cuts. Huh? Strength, strength, yes. Physical, uh, spiritual strength. And the best part is now your relationship with your dumbbells is so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Satan wants us to fear that what God says won't come to pass. You must get rid of your fear and believe. And believe that God loves you enough that when you die to your desires, you will surely, surely receive a harvest. With this formula, can we live a great life in the future? By, plant, by dying today. Come on. If you got a barren land and you start cultivating and start planting seeds today, watering the seed, can you have a future garden? Come on. Is it going to turn into a garden in the first day? No. Is, are you going to go through a process? Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm work in progress. I'm work in progress. Yeah. I'm? Praise God. Next one. Let's take an example of Peter. He said, I'm ready to lay down my life. What happened to Peter and how he denied Jesus? Praise God. Peter stated that he would lay down his life for Jesus. But Jesus knew what? He was. So every time you walk in fear, you will refuse to lay down, lay down your life. You will refuse to die. Now, why was Peter so afraid? Peter was afraid when pressure was on him. My friend, every time you are under pressure, you will refuse to die. Are you with me? And that's where our practice is all about. Once you know, listen, once you know that dying to myself is always, always going to bring reward, harvest, and a great life in abundance, and a God kind of life. Once you know that, no matter how much the devil is putting fear, you must be quick to move by faith and plant it as a seed. And once you start doing it, the harvest that will come from that seed is going to be always beyond imagination. One of the most powerful tools that the devil puts to stop a harvest is pressure. Do you go through pressure? And when you go through pressure, what, which way do you move? The word way or the world's way? So is the reward there in that pressure? Yes. But will that reward be manifested? No. It will only be manifested when you learn to die. Now somebody might say, brother, how does a person learn to die? Okay? I think the last time we had uh, read the scripture, we'll read it again. Because many a times we have a tendency to forget. Luke 17 The disciples of John showed John of all the things that Jesus was doing in his ministry. And, G and John calling unto him, that is two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus saying, Are you he that should come or should we look for another? And when the men were come unto Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you he that should come, or should we look for 
another. And in that, please read that, please. And in that same, and in that same, so one hour, in that same hour, Jesus cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind, he gave sight. So, when they asked a question, did Jesus speak to them for one hour? Are you with me? Did Jesus speak to them for one hour? He did not speak to them for one hour. He was busy casting out demons, healing the sick, the blind, right? Uh, healing people of different kinds of sicknesses. What must be happening to the disciples? Come on, we asked you a simple question. Come on, Jesus, are you the Christ or should we look out for another? This is what John the Baptist has asked us. Are you the Messiah? And Jesus does not answer them for one hour. Now look what he does. Jesus answering told them, go your way and tell John that I am the Messiah. Now, now, what did Jesus say? Go and tell John I am the Messiah. No. He said, go and tell what you have seen, what you have heard. How the blind can see, the lame can walk, the lepers are clenched, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to, to the poor the gospel is preached. Come on, is that an answer? Can that be an answer? If you are the Messiah, itna bada bhashan. Huh? Come on, say in one line here, yes or no. Now they must be telling Jesus. Come on, say in one line. And what, are, what is Jesus saying? Okay, you go and tell John. Da 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 Okay, after that. And blessed is he who so ever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, when the messengers or the disciples of John were departed, he began to speak to the people concerning John. Why did you go into the wilderness to see? What did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? What did you go to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Hey, behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's court. Hey, why did you go for to see a prophet? Hey, I say to you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I will send my messenger before your face, which shall prepare the way before you. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Praise God. Now, did he speak the good things about John when the disciples were there or the disciples were gone? Huh? So when should Jesus speak these words? Before or after? If he had spoken it before, wouldn't John the Baptist be encouraged? Look at Jesus. He speaks encouraging words when that person is not there. We speak encouraging words. And when the person is not there, we speak more beautiful words. So we are learning from Jesus. Praise God. Isn't it strange that Jesus should speak like this and for one hour not even give an answer and after one hour of waiting, imagine you are a disciple and you asked a question and one hour you are waiting and after one hour you are waiting and you say, you saw what is happening? Go and tell him. Now, had these disciples told John the Baptist before? Just aage, aage, upar le, upar le. Upar le, upar le, upar le. 20 page, 20, 19, 19, 19, 19. And the, disciple, uh, and the disciples of John showed him of all these things. What things? Of what Jesus was doing. So, did the disciples already tell John? Yes. Now John sent them again. Now, what is the answer? 
what do you see? Can't he say in simple words? Kali ka heran kiya John the Baptist ko. And that also are encouraging words, not in front of the disciples. After they are going, he is telling the people. Sometimes Jesus does strange things. We will see another example. Matthew. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed there to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard, now John had heard, John had heard in the prison what? The works of Christ. He sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you he that should come or should we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and show John again. Go and show John again. Again. Those things which you do here and see. That means John has been sending the disciples again and again and Jesus is giving them one only answer. The blind can see, the deaf can hear. Come on, tell me, Lord, are you the Messiah? The blind can see, the deaf can hear, the lame can walk, the crippled. Are you the Messiah? Can't he speak in one plain word? Wouldn't that encourage John the Baptist? Come on, if you have a question and somebody speaks to you plainly, Jesus doing all this. So many times you are also saying, God, I am asking you a simple question and you are giving me so many scriptures. God, why do you think John the Baptist, who is a person who has, who has seen Jesus, who has seen the Holy Ghost come upon him, who has heard the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved son, who has seen all this manifesting, who has even prophesied that here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who has been saying, he must increase and I must decrease. And now, after all throughout that journey, when he is come to a situation when he's in the prison, he's saying, hey, are you the Messiah or should I look for another? Isn't it strange? Has it happened in your life that you have experienced the power of God so much and then again there comes a time when you get into unbelief? Yes. Come on. Yes. If, if John the Baptist could get into unbelief, can you and I get into unbelief any time? Yes. Yeah. So, what is Jesus giving a remedy to John the Baptist unbelief? Is he saying plainly, I am the Christ? No. Is again and again and again pointing to that same thing that the blind can see, the deaf can hear. Why is he doing that? He's doing that to show John the Baptist that the only thing that can ever encourage you in this world is the Word of God. <coughs> only the Word of God can keep you away from unbelief, my friend. And that's what he wants to show John the Baptist because he is the one who knew the scriptures. Okay? Isaiah 61. Because, because I, John the Baptist was the one who said, I am the messenger that has been sent by God who is supposed to prepare the way of the Lord. Praise God. It was all a prophecy given to the prophet Isaiah. God had shown about the Messiah coming to establish his kingdom. Praise God. And uh, John the Baptist had believed those scriptures. Amen? Amen. Now look at that scripture. Where did he turn into unbelief? Uh, Isaiah 61?
they start with 16. Click on 16. Okay, please read it. Please, please read it, please. And again. So he was directing John the Baptist to the scriptures, but John the Baptist was directing himself through his own emotions. And that's exactly what happens in our lives. If, that's why 
we got to study the scriptures we don't need to read the scriptures reading the scriptures will not give you understanding studying the scriptures studying the truths applying the truths will give you solid foundation and you will be having victory in your life praise god hallelujah did you get that now what happened with peter peter refused he de denied because when pressure came on him he denied jesus when pressure comes on us we deny how many times the lord has been saying when a person begins to open his mouth and praise god in every situation why is god saying it's a commandment it's not an option to praise god when things are good but the bible says praise god in all times magnify him at all times why because when you do that god takes over the battle and can give you victory everything of the devil is paralyzed it's stopped it cannot come against you and that's why god gives you a command to do it but what happens to us with all our negative emotions we instead of praising god we start uh, meditating on the negative things get into worry and fear and instead of praising god we are grumbling murmuring and complaining and what god had promised a uh, land flowing with milk and honey a promised land we miss the mark and we are still in the wilderness lacking and lacking and lacking is it true yes. does that happen yes. so is pressure going to come on you slide slide is pressure going to come on you yes. come on yes. so are you going to overcome pressure by getting into the scriptures yes so the more and more knowledge of god and the more and more application of those truths will encourage you and build you up and you will be able to face your trial and reach to the promised land praise god praise the lord too many people are afraid that god's word won't come to pass in their lives because of their current uh, past experience because of their current circumstances because of the world testimonies <coughs> how, how how many times do you read the bible uh, the read the newspaper what do you get good news or bad news? when you be listen to the news channel what do you get good news or bad news but all the time what do you want to hear you feed yourself with all those testimonies of the world with all the bad news and then you expect to move in faith it doesn't happen but if you read the good news of heaven that comes from the bible you have got testimonies of our testimonies of what god has done in a supernatural way now is it going to build you up Yeah. Praise God. When you are afraid, you crown yourself Mr. India, Miss India. Do we crown ourselves God? Hello. Do we crown ourselves God when you are afraid? What kind of decision do you take? God's way? or your own thing so who is god ah uh, when you are god are you able to rule over your life correctly no it's going to be a mess tell your neighbor don't make yourself god you not create any other god don't crown yourself god every time you crown yourself god you make wrong decisions my friend the the end result the future is disaster put the next one next one. so how do you know you are you, you have freed yourself from selfishness every time you die to yourself it's an act of love amen i thought you were god's love but of course human love is you bring one carrot of ring i love you Why are you looking at me like this? I'm not talking about this place. No, I'm talking about the world, not Christians. Coming first time. That's why you're looking at me. <laughs> Here, all are coming from a long time. So our love is not based on action. Our love is based on God's love. That's why you're looking. You bring a thick chain. Yellow color. 
I love you, darling. You do things that are pleasing to me, I love you. But true love, evidence of love to God is when I put my selfish uh, desires to death willingly. Now I prove to God that I love you. Even in our relationship, in our marriage, it can only be proved by dying to self. The more and more you die to self, you are showing evidence of your love. Praise God. Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay? There is an husband who keeps telling his wife, I love you, honey. I love you, I love you, I love you. The whole day he will say, I love you. Now he comes from work and the wife says, Honey, I don't, uh, I just opened the fridge and there are no onions and potatoes and carrot. Can you just go and bring some onions, potato and carrot? You say, uh, listen, I just came from work. I'm a little tired, but I will surely just give me some time. And the wife is busy in the kitchen. Nice husband. Did not say no. I will do it. Just then he gets a call from his friend. And he says, hey, tonight there's a party, man. Come. Okay? So he says, okay, which place? Everything is done on the phone. Gets dressed up and everything. And the wife is so happy because the husband said, I will go in 45 minutes. He's ready in 15 minutes. So the wife is saying, okay, while going, don't forget the brinjals. And the husband is saying, I got a call from the uh, uh, office and they've called me urgently. So I have to go. And while going also he will say, I love you honey. Now honestly speaking, whom does he love? The wife or the friend? He did not say to his friend, even once I love you. But to the wife, how many times he said? What happened? Why are you all so serious? So serious ho gaya hai. Kya ho gaya? I am just giving an example. Who is he actually loving? He is loving his wife only by words. But when you see his action, it clearly proves he loves his friend more than anybody. He loves himself. So your action of your love to God is not shown in how many times you say, Jesus, I love you, but in how many acts you are ready to die to yourself. Now you prove that you love God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Often people say that they love God, but their love is not proven through their actions. So is it possible for a person to say, I love you, Lord, and uh, do some service in the church? Come on. Yes. Now a person is ser uh, serving in the church, okay? Now, is he doing the act of love? Yes. yes. So let's say I'm a volunteer in the church, okay? So I'm doing a service for her, and then they give me a badge. And I put it here. After I get a badge, that colored badge, what's my attitude? Have you seen anybody with a badge? What's the attitude? No, 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 not everybody. Huh? <laughs> Brother, I, I want you to just go around. And see with this formula, okay? Okay? You might be serving. No problem. Remember one thing. God never, never sees the service that you do. You know what God sees? Your heart condition when you were serving. If you go and say, God, I did this and this and this, he is not interested in those acts. He is only interested in the acts. He is only interested in the heart condition when you did that act. 
And in that heart condition, if you have not died to yourself, praise God, all your service is nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it is only when a person is doing service inside the church or outside the church or anywhere and their heart is, uh, when a person is dying to self and doing that service, praise God, you will always find transformation and change of lives. And if there is no death involved, then it's only social service. Because your service of dying to self will always bring conversion in people's life. Because that act of love is a powerful seed that will always bring change of lives. Even our simple volunteer shows love, shows a very good attitude. It can change a person and speak a beautiful sermon by that one small act of love. Praise God. Because I have had lots of times bad experience with people who had batches. When that same person had no batch, that person is very cool. The moment he gets a batch, he's different. So there are many a times we work in the church and we believe that I'm working for the ministry. But if my attitude is not of dying to self, if my heart condition, my heart motive is not right, it will bring forth no result. It will bring forth no fruit. It will bring forth no conversion. Praise God. So every time you say, God, I love you, you know what's the next question he'll say? Show me evidence. That's why he says, the one who says, I love you, I love you, I love you, is the one who will keep my word. And to keep his word, you are so soaked in the word of God, day and night, night that you are living by those instructions. And when you do that, your life becomes such a blessing. Amen. Every day, you are living a different life. You are filled with joy, irrespective of the situation, around you. You are filled with peace irrespective of the situation around you. Your mind is stayed on the Lord and not on your circumstances. That's when you are walking in love with God. And once you experience that, praise God, you are able to pour that love in anybody. No matter who comes against you, no matter who is insulting you, no matter who is spoiling your name, no matter who is talking behind your back, nothing, nothing, nothing matters to you. You still walk in love. And that all these things come to one formula, dying to yourself. Praise God. You know, you know, if you are a person who is dying to yourself, people who are in trouble will be searching for you. And they'll say, come on, I want you to speak to this one. I want you to speak to that one. Because now you are no longer encouraging somebody with your words. You are taking them back into the scriptures and showing them with your own life, the life that you are living and how you are winning battles in your life. Only if you are winning battles in your life, you can teach others how to win battles in their life. Is it right? Come on. But if you are uh, just serving or doing anything, but your own personal life, you are living a life of defeat because... You refuse to die to yourself. You know what happens? You also become a witness. You become a bad witness. Where you are uh, showing that your life is a life of defeat. Praise God. Evidence of your love is to deny those things that contradicts to God's truth. How does a person shows that he's a man of God and you find him drunk? You find him abusing, uh, angry words, always walking, uh, always wanting to be comfortable himself, looking at his own comfort and all those things. Can he be a good witness? No. But when he denies himself again and again, anything that is contradicting to God's word, praise God, 
his character becomes more and more like Jesus. And when he goes and begins to stand, his very presence brings uh, signs, wonders, and change of lives. To love God is to say no to feelings, desires, and emotions that oppose his words. Praise God. What is Nine? Are we going to practice this? Yes. This is true Lenten mission. And this is not a Lenten mission for 40 days. This is a Lenten mission for the life. And when you do this, believe me, your life will be such a blessing that your death to self is going to bring transformation of so many people's life. Amen. You know, every time I keep running from place to place, proclaiming the word of God, the only thing that motivates me again and again is only one thing. What makes me run is only one thing. When I meet people, they say, hey, when you shared that word and showed us the secret, we went and practiced and praised God. My marriage got restored. My son came back. This happened. That happened. My life changed. This one. That gives me so much. And that's my love offering everywhere I go. To your testimonies of people's life will change. I, I tell you, the best love offering a person can give me is come and share with me and tell me how his life has changed. That this boy who was a male prostitute, when he shared that, I, we, we both prayed together. He cried and said, God, how good and wonderful you are. And, and how did he do that? By preaching the gospel. The word changed. He made that decision. I do not want that money that comes from sin. Lord, I'm ready to die to myself. And now the money comes from the right source. Can we just close our eyes for a moment? Right as you go back, make a decision. Which areas are you drawn to go away from the Lord? Which are those areas that you keep on falling again and again? God wants you to die to self. God wants you to deny yourself and follow him. Today God is saying to you, my friend, are you willing to lose your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings that are contradicting to his word? Are you ready to resist them? The word of God says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. The word does not say that God will make the devil flee from you. But your submission to God and his word, your dying to self, will give you so much of power that you will be able to resist the devil. And that resisting the devil is the demonstration of your love for your God. When you with your own heart are willingly Say no to sin. And you offer yourself. And you offer yourself to be crucified on that cross to yourself. That's the demonstration of love. There must have been times when you have been saying to God, God, I love you. But tonight Jesus is saying, I demonstrated my love for my father when I sacrificed myself on that cross. I did it in obedience to my father. Every negative emotion in me wanted to draw me away from the cross. But yet, I made a firm decision 
to obey my father. Tonight that same father is saying to you, that is interested in you loving him by keeping his commandments. You do not demonstrate your love to God by human emotional love. Because this human emotional love is always unstable. But the love that he is talking about is a stable love where your decision is, I am a doer of the word of God. And tonight, my friend, as you make that decision, the Father and the Holy Spirit will help you, strengthen you right now through His Word. Everything that goes against His Word and His will, He will help you and strengthen you to put it to death. Amen. Father, just as the testimony of that boy, young boy, who made the decision to be a doer, he never knew that by being a doer, he would experience a life of liberty, a life of freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from slavery, bondage, evil force, he experienced a complete, perfect healing because he made up a choice to die to self. My friend, if you are looking for any kind of healing, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing, social, uh, uh, financial healing, healing in your marriage or anything, When you plant yourself as a seed, you shall experience the resurrection power of Christ. You shall experience the life, life in abundance. Tonight, the Lord, as you are going back, is saying to you, you are that grain of wheat. Unless you fall into the ground and die, you remain by yourself. You'll remain a selfish being. But if you fall and die to yourself, you will bring forth a much abundant fruit. You will find a new purpose in life. You will find my plans being unfolded in your life. You will find what your eyes have not seen what your ears have not heard, what has not even entered into your heart, I have already prepared those things for you and you will find them manifested in your life through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you and praise you, Father, for this message and we make this commitment to God that we are not the hearers, we are the doers of the world. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you.